Hello, welcome to Have Roots, Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltore and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. This past year, we've been exploring Les Filles du Roi, going after each and every one of them, going to honor these over 700 ladies who came and they really were the founding mothers to me of Quebec, Canada, and also North America. So let's have a look at episode number 104 and see what's in store. Before we proceed, I wanna make sure to remind you to subscribe and click on that notifications alert. If you're interested in the previous videos we would have done, check out um, my website, averagewilltravel.com, because I have uh, links to each of those videos and also kind of a preview of what's coming up. So check that out. Um, I would also urge you to look at my Facebook page and subscribe because then you will know when I post new content as well. Regular viewers of the channel know that if you want more information on Les Filles du Roi, to have a look at the program, um, the video I produced called The Program 2.0, it's on the playlist. It's also on my website if you want to have a look. It gives you an idea of what the ladies went through. So we're doing Marie Grande number two. Okay, because last week, we, or the last episode, we did number one. Number two was actually the request that prompted all this um, and uh, was from a viewer. I have nobody else in my files um, with this particular ancestor. Let's find out about Marie Grande number two and what's, what she is all about. We don't know much about Marie Grande number two, except for the fact that we are pretty certain that she came from the city of Rouen, which is a city on the River Seine in northern France. It's the capital of the region of Normandy, and at one time was the largest city in medieval Europe. It played a prominent role in both English and French histories from the 11th to the 15th century. Joan of Arc was tried and buried alive in 1431 in this area. Rouen is a city of cultural and educational significance, such as you really can't really uh, find uh, very many other cities that would rival this. So we don't know, we know she was born in 1655, possibly in the Rouen, and her parents are unknown. Let's keep looking for more information. She was about 13 years of age when she came on the Nouvelle France and she arrived on July 3rd, 1668. Given the fact we don't know any other information about her, it's highly probable she was an orphan and sent um, to New France for that reason. So the groom that selects her and who she selects, his name is Michel Morel de Parisien. He was born in 1630 in Troyes. Um, his parents are unknown. Now, Troyes is found in the region of France, now known as Grand Est. And his department, where he was born, um, is part of the department of Aubé. So Troyes is a commune of a township, remember that, of about 62,000 people. So it's not a small little village. Um, it's actually, Troyes is situated within the Champagne wine region. And um, so it's, it's about, um, it's located on the Seine River, about 87 miles from Paris. So that gives you an idea. Troyes developed as early as the Roman era. Some of the most notable events in its history include the Council of Troyes, which involved the rights of the Knights of Templar, whose founder, Hugues de Péa, was born in Troyes, the Council of Troyes, the marriage of Henry V and Catherine of France. In the Middle Ages, the Champagne Fairs were held here. Sister Marguerite Bourgeois, who would play an important role in Montreal and New France, was also born here. I give you the church where he would have been baptized in and also just a the middle uh, right is kind of what it looks like today totally charming totally French and that symbol there is the Knights of Templar that um, are very very famous and a picture of Marguerite is there so he came from definitely uh, although we do not know who his parents were we do know uh, the kind of place that he came, he originated from so we do not know all the particulars of how Michel came um, to New France. We do know that he was confirmed in Quebec City as of 1665. So he had some time to get ready to, um, 
to have a wife. And Marie and Michelle were married sometime in 1670. Although we don't have a marriage record, we do know that their first child was baptized at the Immaculate Conception Church of Torribiara. This is a picture of the church as it looks today. I could not find a picture of what the church would have looked like at that point, but I wanted to show you the ground where they were married. So Marie and Michelle would begin their family. Um, their son, Amador de Francois, was born in 1671. He would go on to marry Marie Roy and have seven children, all of whom would make it to adulthood. So remember that Michel was significantly older than Marie, but of course he was in his 40s, but he died very suddenly um, from what we can gather. He died sometime in 1671. And as true New France fashion, one man dies, another arrives. Who was that man? Well, we don't know very much about him, but we do know his name. His name was Claude de Robillard, and he was born about 1650, so much closer to her age. His origins, though, are unknown, but we do know that he was a master butcher. So that's kind of cool. I haven't had a butcher yet. Um, in um, in all of the um, you know things of that I've been profiling, so that's what his profession was. We do not have a marriage record for Claude and Marie, but we do know that they settled down in Champlain. So I've talked about Champlain a few times, but let's review. Champlain, Quebec, is right there. It's it's um, up. It's kind of in between Quebec City and uh, Trois-Rivières. Um, La Perroise, Notre-Dame de la Visitation, uh, érigée, de, uh, built by um, Monsieur Laval, uh, Monsignor Laval. And so it's just really kind of an interesting flow of events. And it gives you the date. This particular one tells you um, 1666 uh, was the first Eglise, 1700, the uh, the Deuxième Église, um, 1807, then 1879. So it gives you a chronicle, even the genealogy of the church. The Champlain municipality lies on the territory of the former seigneuries of Marcelet and L'Arbelacoua, both granted on April 5th, 1644. And the seigneurie of Champlain was granted on April, August 8th, 1664. The French the first French occupants of Champlain settled here about 1664-65. They had there had been a first attempt to settle, um, you know, on the land granted in 1643, but the distance from other settlements and the Iroquois threat discouraged the settlement. In 1664 or 65, the first settlers began to establish um, the land of the Seigneury of Champlain. The following year, in 1666, concessions were granted in the Seigneury of Hertel and in the Seigneury of Marcelet. Some of the first families that came from Trois-Rivières, such as the family of Antoine de Rosier, François Chorel, and Pierre Dandonneau. I always like to say that in case your family, that's a name that that kind of rings true. Let's have a look at, in, by 1681, they have definitely put down roots. Claude Robillard is 31, Marie Grande, Grande, Veuve de Michel Morel. You see how they, they keep track of this. His wife is 10 years younger. Um, Alphonse, their children, is Marie, and they, they specify um, that it is, um, that she is a Robillard, and H, Claude, Adrienne, and then François Morel, he's listed as a domestique. Um, I suspect that's the, the um, Michel's Claude stepson, François. Trois bêtes three goats, and 18 arpents voilà. That is really quite remarkable. So um, don't know if he acquired this land from some of the proceeds that maybe Marie had from being the widow of, not sure. But um, certainly by 1681, they're doing fairly well. So they would go on to have nine children. Marie-Jeanne would marry Jean Joseph Trotti and have nine children, all of whom would make it to adulthood. Claude would marry Angélique Cesser, and they would have five children, all of whom would make it. 
Adrienne moved to Illinois and married a native woman. We have no further info, but this is where DNA will prove very useful. Some of you may all of a sudden link up to this family and don't know why. This could be the missing link. Louis died in infancy. Nicolas married Francois Cécile, which was the sister of Angelique, and they would have 13 children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Marie-Thérèse married Jean-Baptiste Moisin and would have two children, both of whom would make it. Joseph married Marguerite Besnay and had ten children, six of whom would make it. Jean-Baptiste may have died young, we're not sure. Pierre married Catherine Coutu and had eight children, all of whom would make it to adulthood. So after 1681, they moved to Montreal. So let's talk a little bit about Montreal, this wonderful city that I love and was really kind of very close to my hometown. Um, started off as Ville-Marie by the founder, Paul de Chomedy, Sœur de Maisonneuve, and was essentially a missionary center. In May of 1642 was its beginnings. The colony would not thrive and it was on the verge of extinction when Chomedy decided to return to France to recruit a hundred settlers, who would then be known as Le Grand Recru. From this small group would evolve the Notre Dame Congregation from Sister Marguerite Bourgeois. And when, Mar when Montreal was founded, the new colonists were rapidly confronted by a fearsome enemy, the Iroquois. Unfortunately, there was no regular army on Montreal soil until 1665, when the Carignan Saint-Saint Regiment landed there. But in the meantime, militias capable of resisting Iroquois attacks were set up. On January 27, 1663, Chamonix de Maisonneuve created the saint famille militia to protect Ville-Marie and its inhabitants. It was made up of 139 volunteer colonists divided into 20 squads. A corporal was elected by the members of each squad. The Saint Famille militia was headed by Zachary Dupree, the future owner of the Fife of Verdun. I am told that this is something that Claude would have engaged in as well. So Marie would die on October 31st, 1708 at the very young age of 53, most likely a victim of the epidemic that was occurring in Montreal at that time. At her death, she and Claude were to be married an astonishing 36 years. Descendants from her two marriages in 1729 numbered 132. And she is buried um, in um, Montreal at Notre Dame. Now Claude would remarry, uh, would not have any uh, children. He would actually uh, marry another Fijoa named Françoise Guillen, um, Guillen, um, and uh, but they would not have any children together, and he would in turn pass away at in 1719 as well. Here are some of my top uh, resources. We have La Société des Fijoa, which is a lineage society that you can join if you have a, uh, are a descendant of Les Fijoa. Uh, it's a fabulous website. I used it even before I became a member. I became a member and now I'm the membership chairperson for them as well. Uh, just a great resource. Even if you're not a member, check it out. Two, number two is a paid, um, is a, you know, a paying website, the Quebec Genealogy E-Society. Wonderful resources. They're fairly new. They're five or six years old, I believe, um, but just remarkable in terms of all the resources that they provide. So please check them out. We also have Nous Origines, uh, which is a fabulous and not paying site at all. Um, and um, really, really good uh, website for uh, just kind of uh, working together with other um, people who have French Canadian lineage. Number four, Genealogy Quebec is for me, the ancestry of Quebec, ancestry.com of Quebec. It is a paying website, well worth every penny. Number five, Migration is an, a free website. You can donate, which I do, um, but um, absolutely give it a whirl. It is in French um, and um, you know, you can use the Google Translate, I think, um, and kind of get more information. And then number six is a Facebook page, Fille du Roi Descendants, wonder, a really wonderful place to kind of connect with other people uh, and see what kind of resources they might have discovered. So check that out. And so we end episode number 104, Megan Grande number two. Really remarkable story. I mean, 13 years old, coming over, marrying a man about 25 years older than her. Um, his death 
having to get remarried, moving to different places. Um, just a remarkable story of endurance and survival. It's only sad that her life was cut short at 53, but oh, the gift she gave us. Um, and so I thank the viewer for recommending this because it really was a good story. And I really enjoy getting to know Mary Grande number two, her perseverance, her strength, and her gift to us continue. Thank you so much. We bless your memory. And with that, I will see you on episode number 105. Until then, au revoir. <laughs>